Hi, I'm David. Today I want to go through all the hidden things for Scalar 2. So here you can see my logic profile. I've got a Scalar set up um, and effectively I've got some chords really. I've made some chords. I want to get Scalar involved. I want it to control all these different little things I've got going. I've got um, a Scalar uh, felt piano, I've got um, native instruments, uh, uh, sorry, heavy osities ascend, um, I've also got um, Spitfire, um, a patch from them, a cello patch from them, I've got Omnisphere strings, and I've got um, a carbon electro lead sound. So, what I want to do is I want to come back to the my first initial strings. Uh, my first initial chords, I should say. Um, I want to get them in. Let's let's assume I've started the track with no scalar at all. I want to just get, get the chords straight into scalar, and then I want to start having scalar control all the other instruments. Now, one of the reasons I like to do that is that I want to be able to change chords or edit chords, and rather than have to um, play around with every MIDI file across track, I'd like scalar to do that. And also, if I want to change articulations or do keys lock or play expressions within Scalar, I really want to be able to control that all within Scalar. So, okay, first thing to do is we pull up Scalar. Um, one of the things is so many things in the, in the settings menu that we can often get a little overwhelmed with the options in there, but I want to look at the session. Um, that's what we're going to start by doing. So, Okay, I've helped, I've got Scatter to help me come up with these chords that you see here, see here in the logic file. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to clear and start from scratch. So session, clear, clear state, and bang, that just brings um, Scalar back to my standard state. Uh, standard state, it's always ready to go and detect. So I'm now going to hit record and I'm going to detect these chords. see Scalar correctly detecting those MIDI chords and it will give me the exact MIDI chords inside Scalar. Great, so I'll just stop my logic file there and I will stop the Scalar detection. So they're my chords, you can hear them. That's exactly the chords that I want. Okay, so now I'm going to be confident enough to kind of get rid of uh, the chords that I've written and I'm going to multi-drag, which is a really cool thing in Scalar to do. And I'm going to drag them all down to section C so I've got complete control. I'm going to bind them uh, and obviously I can either play or just write those notes in. As all the chords are bar, I can, I can pretty much easily write um, those notes in. So I can just write two, chord number three, chord number four, chord number five, chord number six, and my eighth and final chord. So here, here they should be. And you can see them being triggered there. That's great. Scale has obviously told me that it's an F minor scale, um, even though you can see some of my voicings are a little odd, but that's cool. We'll take advantage of that. And it's told me it's a serious, sad, emotional um, and sentimental scale, um, which it sounds like. So that's great. Okay, so now I want that scalar in an instrument. Now I want a third party instrument to control. I've got heavy osities ascend piano. Um, so I want um, scalar to control that. Now there's a couple of ways I can do this, interestingly enough. I can pull up um, Scalar as a uh, MIDI effect in Logic, um, and I could also open up, reopen up the very first Scalar. Um, can drag and drop across Scalars, uh, depending upon what you're doing. So, you know, one option would be that I just grab these MIDI files here and just go, okay, bang, bring it into the new Scalar. Scalar's gonna detect those MIDI files and go, there you go. So effectively, I could do it. I could do it that way, and I could bring it back down here, um, and I could go cool. Okay, so bind that section C, and now we're done. So I've actually across two different instrument MIDI effect. I've now just pulled in those same chords. I can drag down that MIDI region, and uh, we should have uh, ascends. 
piano. There we go. So now I want to go to another third party instrument here to control Spitfires. Uh, I think I've got, uh, yeah, the, their brilliant British drama toolkit. So um, if Scalar's, if you've got Scalar in a certain state, for example, let's say you've got a bunch of things active. Here I've only really got chords. Um, I'm not even doing voice grouping or humanizing, but let's say I've got a great bunch of features. Um, and uh, I want to make sure that I open Scalar across to the same way, um, even across doors. This is, this is where the session import and export state is really useful. I can export the state of Scalar and I can say, cool, let's just put it to my desktop. Um, I could rename that obviously, but that's fine. I've just chucked it there. And now I can import that across any door um, or any session of Scalar. And it's a bulletproof way of just saying, I want that Scalar somewhere else. Um, and of course, it can be across many different versions of Scalar. So I'll just go Plugin Boutique, Scalar Control here, um, and I will just uh, go back to the settings and I'll go Session and I'll Import. Um, and you can see here on my desktop, there's that first file there. I'll import it and there you go, done. So we're back in exactly the same state. Um, um, with everything exactly as I want it. So I should just theoretically be able to pull these down. Yeah, so cool. Again, same thing. I could just uh, I could just keep going. Um, I can pull up another uh, scaler here on my Omnisphere strings patch, and again, I can just go back to that session import um, and import that state there. Uh, there she is, and um, yeah, we're we're straight. You know exactly what I've done. I pull it down, so I'm writing my tune. Great, let's pull up uh, another instrument, shall we? And let's go, um, let's call this, um, I'm not sure, let's call it uh, Scalar um, Synth. And let's say I want to pull up a uh, version of Scalar. Um, I'm going to say, in this instance, I'm going to say, uh, let's import the state, shall I? Import the state, desktop, go. Um, and now I'll go into the heavy hitter patch. And so again, um, now I've got another scalar. Um, I'll pull it, pull up the new one that we just pulled up. There's the heavy hitter. I'm going to go and look for performances. I'm going to go into Vivace and Doppio. Um, and now it's just going to be playing. Cool, so it's going to be playing that almost darped. Uh, it gives me a nice instant bass, if you like, so that's cool. Okay, so now that I've got my sections, um, I, can, I can still play around with my chord progressions if I like. So these are my current progressions. Okay, so let's say I want to change one of the chords. I want to replace chord or, or do whatever it is that you want to do. If I was to come into, say, like D major, so now I can shift click D major and it takes me straight into chord edit mode. Um, and um, I want to kind of have more of a major seventh feel. So I'm going to come up to the suggested chords here and I can see that it's telling me, well, the major seventh has the C key here. 
So come back to my chord and I'm gonna take off this really low note and I'm gonna place it up here. Yep, cool, okay, that sounds good. So I'm gonna apply that. Now the problem is, is that the first instance of Scalar has a different voicing of that D major. Um, and uh, I now need to adjust all the others. Now it's a little bit difficult because I don't even have the MIDI notes. I've only got MIDI trigger notes. Now this is another great little feature within Scalar is I can come back to session and I can synchronize all Scalars within the session. So if I hit sync, again, it's over here, um, settings, session, and sync. If I hit sync, it's going to say, what do you want to synchronize? It's correctly found eight instances of Scalar in my session. Do I want the sound? Do I want the articulations? Do I want just the progression builder? Do I want all three? Well, in this instance, I just want the chords from the progression builder. That's where I've made the change. I'm gonna sync everything and voila, now all of the scalers, if we come down and look at another scalar, has now got that voicing. If I shift click here, you can see that it's got that, that actual voicing in the different instance. So it's a really great way to be able to make any changes you want and sync all scalers. Here we come for the different chord. Yes, yeah, so it's a really flexible way. I love that. I love the way you're able to um, uh, copy and drag across, apart from duplicating within your door, obviously. I like Scalar to take control of these things. So. Um, you can drag MIDI across to another scalar, you can export import sessions and you can sync all scalars. And it just makes it so much easier to be able to write tunes. And then of course from here you can go into modulations and you can go, okay, this is a cool modulation. I'll move it to pattern two. We'll talk about patterns in a second. Um, and then I'll sync all scalars. So you're just writing everything within scalar, but, but actually controlling any instrument you want. Um, let's have a look at another feature here. Um, I'm going to just create another channel and I'm going to call it NI Flute. Um, and that's probably a giveaway. I'm going to pull up uh, Contact and I'm going to look for their um, excellent symphony uh, series strings. This time I'm going to go the woods and I'm going to pull up the flutes. Um, okay, now um, one of the restrictions we often have within uh, many virtual instruments is the range of where they sit. Flutes obviously play high, so NIs correctly voice them and place them high up the range. The problem is, is that if I was to pull up, you can see me here, if I pull up another scalar, you can see that if I move that file down, it's not going to play uh, entirely in that range. Okay? Um, and that's because many of the notes are actually falling out. You can see them here in scalar. They're not actually being played in the flute. So what I can do is I can come into voice grouping and I can say, okay, well, we know the dynamic range groups them really nicely, adds a bass note. You can move that octave up, octave down. And you've also got voicing um, and voicing, open voicing octave up. Um, the grouping does exactly that, restricts the notes to a certain range. So I mentioned that the NI flutes pretty much play from C3 and above. So whatever notes you're playing scalar, can you please restrict it to that two octave range, C3 to B4. So now all these chords will play in that range and subsequently trigger the correct notes. So let me play that again. Yeah, so you can see all the notes now being shifted within the range of NI's flute. Great, okay, all working really nice. Um, uh, you can see that now working with my um, other instruments and my tune. Um, and finally, I've got my carbon electro lead down the bottom waiting for something to trigger it. So I've opened up the original Scalar Felt Piano because I want to drag something across the Carbon Electra lead. Um, now, if I was to pull it across like, like here, you can see that it's giving me half notes. Um, I don't want half notes, I want whole notes. Uh, makes it easier rather than having to adjust the MIDI file. So another thing I can do is I can come back into settings, go into playback, 
my overall global chord duration is two beats. I just want it to be four beats. Makes much more sense um, and it'll fit my tune. Now if I pull these guys out, you can see that it's actually pulled them out at the right length. So ready to go, no adjustments required. Now I've got my lead sound uh, for my carbon electrosynth. Cool, um, so that's a really good way of enabling Scalar to control all your instruments and doing most of the editing um, and moving to and fro between Scalar. Okay, I wanna show you a couple of other things. Okay, so while we're here in Scalar and we've got this uh, tune here, I, I wanna just look around at some of the other hidden features that I really like. So um, let's say I was going to do a modulation. Now we know that we've got the modulation page and I'm, I'm doing a separate workflow video on modulation, so I'll avoid that. Um, um, but there are other ways to explore modulation and one of them might be share common scale so let's say I go okay I've got these chords um, and if I right click um, I can say uh, explore common scales and that's going to give me a list there of all the scales that share those chords so I know that easy modulations would be C Phrygian, D flat Lydian, E flat Mixolydian, uh, the F minor scale that I'm in obviously, G Locrian, uh, a flat major scale, B Dorian mode. So effectively all the modes really, it's what it's showing me up. So yeah, I really like that explore, um, explore the common scales. Um, probably uh, um, another function that's often overlooked, um, which I really like is the parallel harmony. So let's say I like a chord. Yeah, let's say I go the C minor chord. So um, I'm going to rubber band, I'm going to just try and show you as many tricks as we go here. I'm going to rubber band and I'm going to delete, that's another thing you can do, rubber band and delete. Um, uh, I can right click on one chord and I can generate parallel harmony. Um, and what it's done here is you can see um, it's, it's basically just uh, giving me the same chord. Um, transposed up semitones and it goes all the way across all the platens. You can see it's really cool. Um, I'm going to pull out the keyboard for this so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so I'm binding that area. Um, now if I wanted to say go up across multiple patterns, I think a thing that a lot of people don't realize is that you can just uh, multiple select. So let's say I go command and select patterns. Can you see my bind area going up and down? So people often say, well, I'd like to be able to bind more than eight chords in a row. Well, you can. You can, let's say if I bind pattern three, let me just show you pattern one, pattern two. I can bind them. Um, I can rename them obviously, but let me just bind them. Now, if I bind all four, I can actually play all of those uh, C minor chords all the way across. So yeah, you can see me, you can see it automatically switching the pattern to when scalar, when I go into the next range, it switches over to pattern four. So really very intuitive way of being able to play more than eight chords and bind them across. You know that at any stage you can delete patterns, um, you can uh, duplicate them, you can um, detect, you can delete them. So let's say I, you can clear them. Um, let's say I remove them, come back to pattern four, uh, remove it. Um, uh, you can also um, change the order too. So one of the great things is, let's say I go, okay, uh, create another pattern here and move three chords into it. Um, you can change the way they play. So let's say, for example, you wanted to play pattern uh, three first. Um, you can move pattern two across and then say pattern six in the, in the, in the middle. Um, now, if you multi-select, it will actually play through 
you can see it's going to play these chords and then it'll continuously play through um, into the next pattern. There you go, it's gone to pattern six, now it's gone to pattern two. Yeah, so a really good way of being able to um, uh, chain patterns, if you like, play through patterns, change the order of patterns, and don't forget you've always got the pad view um, and you can see them all there. Another hidden thing is, let's say I was here on pattern six um, and I came into, uh, let's just go to edit mode as an example, and let's say I make some changes here, um, you know, create an expression here and an arpeggio here and a strum there. Um, uh, and let's say I wanted to copy them across, keep these settings but play different chords. Well, you can just come into pattern six and you can duplicate. Um, and now if I, if I look at pattern seven, it's the same pattern. So if I select pattern seven, come to pattern seven, they're exactly the same. But if I come to pattern seven, I can now replace those chords um, and it will keep, um, it'll keep the edit setting. So here now, so it's a really good way of keeping these settings um, and playing them across um, multiple patterns, duplicating and playing them across multiple patterns. Um, okay, I'm going to I'm going to clear uh, clear this state um, and uh, let's re-import the state that we were initially um, working through. Let's re-import that state. So now I've got these chords here. Um, let's say I prefer this voicing of the major to that voicing of the major, or vice versa. Um, one of the great features which I use often is the ability to um, extract that voicing. Now, if I extract the voicing, there's a few things I could do. I can come to voice grouping, and instead of dynamic, I can use the extracted voicing across any chord that I play. So that's a global setting. Yeah, so it's really cool because it's basically just applied the voicing and the characteristics of that voicing and um, uh, applied it globally across any chord, which is it's really a great, great feature. Uh, let me turn the voice grouping off um, and let's come back now because I've extracted the voicing there and I want to apply that voicing over to this D major. So if I come over to D major and I can now um, apply the voicing, you can see it's now changed the voicing to be much more like the E flat major. Yeah, extract and apply voicing, really great feature, very flexible feature. We know that, that it's infinitely flexible um, in terms of moving patterns, copying, duplicating patterns, and you can also do that with chords. You can, you can move the position of chords. Uh, you can copy chords just by holding the option key. You can copy chords. We know that you can remove chords, you can delete chords. Uh, you can replace by rests should you want to if you're using the playback um, function. You can detect and say, okay, well, here's some new chords I've got down here. Um, we can detect it and it'll come up and say, okay, those new chords, there they are. This is the scale you're now in. So it's actually said to me, well, you're more likely to, to be in the D flat Lydian scale. Um, while we're here, the variations is kind of overlooked. They're in a different place in scale of one, but let's say I am in the D flat Lydian, or let's go back to the F minor scale. Um, the good thing about the variations, it, it will, if I select F, it will show me all the variations of the F chord. Now what's interesting about the variations menu is it also shows me the chord functions, kind of hidden away in there. Um, it tells me the second degree is the supertonic, then we've got the medians. The, so it's a really good way of seeing the chord functions in the variations menu. Um, I want to look at the customization of um, Scalar because it's, it's infinitely customizable in terms of the um, fonts and how it looks and what it does. So um, if we go into the settings menu in preferences, um, you can actually change the chord items back to light chord items, which is really cool. If you like anything at any stage, you, you just basically come back and set as the default. Um, so let's say, okay, the font size is uh, uh, default there. I want to make it large. Um, and now if I set as a default, then that's the default. The position, the, the size, um, you can actually take off the blinking effect too. Um, so you can move it to off and all blinking stops and you can set as a default. 
Um, you can change the size of scalar. So let's say, okay, uh, I actually would prefer it to be this size every time you open. You can set that as a default too. Um, and uh, you've got the skins. You can change them around. So you can go, okay, cool, I like abstract nature. Now, don't forget your left and right key. Um, once you select something in scalar, any menu, you can left and right. I think that's really cool. Lots of people miss that. You know, if you go to click on an artist preset, we go, let's go CC Rogers. Once you're in that menu, you can left and right. Really great way to um, shift through any functions. Play quantize is an interesting one, probably misunderstood. I might give that a, a, a quick look now. If I say bind section C or section A, remember you can do all that within here as well. Um, uh, let's say I hit play my door. Um, now it's kind of, it's hard to be in time, you know, unless you're right on time of the clock. And that's what play quantize does. It, it just waits for the beat um, and then, yeah, it just makes sure that it's all played in the time. And you can turn and latch that. So now I latch it and it'll just stay latched and now I hit another chord um, and it'll just play quantize and latch. It's a really cool way of just being able to kind of play around. That's what play quantize and latch is in that hidden menu in the playback menu. We could go on and on um, all the little hidden things. I'm going to show you two other important ones. If you ever get a MIDI jam, that's kind of in scale. You can see there's a MIDI and exclamation mark. It's just basically you click it, MIDI panic. Um, sometimes things can get a little CPU intensive when you're doing a few things or you're running a lot of performances, keys lock mode, and you, maybe you, the CPU or your machine's not terribly fast. Um, and again, one of the hidden things is being able to talk, turn off the live audio detection. That's always occurring. It's always in the background. You're in detect mode. It's ready to go. Here's my audio. It can record anything. Um, but you can turn that off and audio detection is now off. It will not function until you turn it back on. And what that does is it just basically saves CPU space. I hope you've enjoyed all the hidden things. Um, there's loads more to go through, but I think that covers a really good um, probably selection of things that I think users have been a little bit confused by. The pattern, um, the ability to copy chords across, the ability to edit chords. I hope you've enjoyed this Scalar 2 All the Hidden Things video.